In this short video, we'll utilize Arbuta Smart Apps to quickly analyze different business process areas and instantly produce meaningful results and visualizations that are backed by industry best practices. And with minimal investments in time and learning, we're ready to share significant insights with our colleagues and management. Arbuta Smart Apps offer a menu of analytics for a growing list of business process areas covering the top requested analytics based on decades of field experience and built according to industry best practices. Starting with accounts payable, I'd like to run a duplicate payments test. Once selected, it guides me through, first asking me to point it to where my payments table is, and then reach through it and allows me to map my vendor field, my invoice field, my payment date field, as well as my payment amount field. I can also select what percentage of fuzzy duplicates I'll like in my results. Next, I can select from a list of duplicate matches. The first one is an exact match on vendor, invoice, date, and amount. Next, fuzzy match with same vendors, invoice, and date, but similar amounts. We'll go with the default $100 range. Next, same vendor, invoice and amount, but with similar dates. I'd like to allow a window of 14 days. Next is same vendor, date and amount, but with similar invoices. Here, Analyzer employs the Levenstein distance algorithm. I'll allow up to one level of difference. And last, in same invoice, date and amount, but with similar vendors, and we'll allow the same logic. It now runs through the tests. I've got 36 exact duplicates. I've got 36 duplicates with similar amounts. I've got 66 duplicates with similar dates. 36 duplicates with similar invoices. And 36 duplicates with similar vendors. It creates a folder where it saves all my findings for me. This one is the initial exact matches on vendors, invoices, pay dates, and pay amounts. What caught my interest was those duplicate payments with the same vendor, invoice, and pay amounts. However, my payment dates are within a 14-day window. Here, we've got nine days difference, six days difference, another one with six days difference. Of course, I also have my exact matches in here. So in one table, I've got all of my exact duplicate entries, as well as those with similar dates that fall within a 14-day period. It's smart, it's adaptable, it allowed me to map my fields according to its needs, and I've got some pretty good results that I can work with. Next, I'd like to look at my general entries, and I'd like to use my smart apps to look for some weekend posted journal entries. It'll ask me to point it to my journal entries table. It'll give me a list of date fields to pick from. We'll go with our posting date here. It'll then give me the ability to identify Friday or Saturday is the beginning of my weekend, depending on what part of the world I'm covering. It has identified 2,867 entries that have happened on the weekend, and it has captured it for me in a separate folder. That was quick and easy yet smart and dynamic. Now, another thing I'd like to do is to look at my employee master data, as well as my vendor master data, and see if there are any exact or similar addresses that we can find. If I go in the menu for smart apps under fraud compliance, you'll notice there are some very interesting and powerful analytics, such as looking for sanctioned provider names in my vendors list or looking for suspicious keywords in my transactions or transactions we might be performing in high-risk countries. And as you can imagine, uh, we can run this against uh, you know, data from multiple business process areas. At the bottom here, however, I have that ability to look at employee and vendor address matching. So let's kick it off. It prompts you to make sure that my street address is in one field. It will then ask me for my employee master table. It needs to know what field I use as an identifier. We'll use our employee number. 
What field I'd like to give it for the employee street address. It then prompts me for another key field, such as a zip code. Um, and I have another three optional fields that I can select, such as a state, for example. And it makes sure to remind me that when I go through the same logic for my vendor master data, that I select them in the same order. So looking at my vendor number here, uh, looking at my street address and passing at the zip code as well. Um, it again uses that Levenstein's distance logic. So I'll allow one level of difference, click OK. Now, not only can I look at my employees and vendors for address match, but I can also look within my employees data to see if there are any matches. And I can look within my vendors data and see if there are any matches there. That's great. I click OK, make sure I know what tests it's running for me. I'll click OK next. Looks like we have six matches between employees and vendor addresses. It also looks like we found six matches across the employees themselves. And look at that, we've got 74 matches across the vendor addresses. So it has created that folder for me and we can start exploring our results. Here, we're looking at the six matches that we found within our employee master data. And we quickly noticed that these all seem to be exact addresses that have been matched. Maybe in this case, we need to look into a potential system issue. Next, we're looking at the matches that were found between our employees and our vendors. Now we start to notice how Analyzer has captured same addresses, even though the word Avenue has been spelled differently. Um, or looking down here, the entries for Northeast Adams Street have been spelled out in very different ways, uh, but it has managed to capture them. And we also see one address where we've matched 450 Lexington Avenue to 750 Lexington Avenue. And this is where that Levenstein distance algorithm has been applied with one level of difference. Now, lastly, when we look at those 74 uh, potential matches that we found within our uh, vendor master data, we start to see a lot of different differences um, that have been normalized. So, you know, looking at Third Avenue being spelled with a number uh, versus being fully written out. Um, as I scroll down here, I notice maybe somebody copied and pasted an address and we have double quotes around it. Um, and that's been weeded out so we can still look at results. As I scroll further down here, we see some other entries of such within the data. I scroll down a little bit further and we start looking at entries where I have suite 64 entered at the back versus a comma with suite 64 and double quotes. A little bit further down, I see here suite's been entered with a hash sign uh, versus being put at the very beginning. And as we start looking at these matches, we can imagine that there's some smart, powerful algorithms that are being used in the back end. So how is Analyzer doing this? If we start comparing the original addresses to what the addresses were converted to, we see that it has removed all non-alphanumeric characters. It has converted everything to uppercase. It has used a mapping table to convert all different ways of spelling the same words, such as avenue or parkway or circle or north or east or whatever have you, to a standard common format. And it has then sorted every entry within an address in a descending order, first starting with each word and then with each numeric. That's a lot of logic and undertaking to make sure that we cast a wide but precise net and we capture those addresses that could be potential matches. And these smart apps cover all these angles automatically so that I can quickly run numerous analytics for all these different business process areas without having to touch up my data sets, if you will, or change them, and without having to learn any kind of complex analytics or coding. And I've already got some really good insights about the control gaps or potential patterns of behavior internally or within our vendors. Now, we want to create a data analytics report so we can share our findings with others. And we'll create some data visualizations to help us better position and share those findings and the insights that we've gained. 
Starting with my duplicate payments table with my similar dates, I'm gonna go ahead and tell Analyzer that I want to export it. I have many output formats to pick from, but we're gonna stick with Excel. And I want to make sure that my table looks exactly the same as I've laid it out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name and click OK. You'll notice that Excel document's been created and when I open it here, I see that it created a tab with my table name. Let me stretch these out so they look a little bit better. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to our table and let's tell Analyzer to give us a visualization with uh, the monetary amount, payment amount, summarized or grouped by vendor so I can get a monetary representation of that. Click on my visualization report. Um, and here I can go ahead, I can change the name, I can format it how I'd like it to look. Maybe I'll change my color scheme to something that looks better for me. Um, and then I can go ahead and download an image. I'm just going to open it here and copy it. Go back into my Excel document and I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. Now let's just go and resize this so it looks a little bit better for us. Okay, here we go. Now, of course, I can also add some text uh, to give a narrative and you know help myself get a better message out there as to the findings that I have here. Okay, I've got my duplicate payments covered. I'm gonna close my Excel document and my image. Let's go into our general ledger area and open those weekend general entries. This time, um, I'm going to go ahead and export this into that same Excel document. Um, and what Analyze is going to do is create a new tab for me in there and add that information in there. So there it is, my journal entries. Um, again, I'm going to make sure this looks good. And if I scroll to the right here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to insert a visualization right in there. So let's go back to our table. Um, what I'd like to do this time is to do a grouping by employee who has actually posted it um, and get a monetary value. Again, I can go ahead. Um, I can configure this as I'd like to. I have a list of different types of graphical representations to pick from. Um, I'll go to my dark blue color scheme as I like it for this one. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and download this picture. Let's open it, get a copy of it, go back into our Excel document um, and paste it here. And again, I'll just make sure that I go ahead, take this and resize it to something smaller. That makes more sense for us. Let's take a look. Does this look pretty good? Yes, that looks great. Awesome. And now, last but not least, we'll go take those 74 records of matched addresses uh, across our master vendor table. And we'll export these and add these to our data analytics report as well. And this will give you us a completed view of the findings that we deem worthy of sharing with our colleagues and management. I have now easily created a package that contains both the facts and visualizations and it's in a commonly used and consumable format. And I've done so from within my Arbutus interface without having to jump around multiple applications. And I'm ready to share my report with my colleagues in management. By using the analyzer's smart apps and visualization capabilities, you can very quickly and efficiently analyze multiple business process areas uncover valuable insights and build visualizations that allow you to provide a full context and tell a story with your findings. You can instantly provide great value and insights for your team and the org. And you've done it all without the need for learning how to code or perform manual complex analysis or build visualizations from scratch.